In music appreciation today, we learned how to find notes on the keyboard, and all the students got to play a little bit. We also learned how to identify notes on the staff, and we also played and did some notation exercises. It was a wonderful Monday. So in Group Keyboard Skills 1 today, we continued using my favorite toy, the Note Finder, finding notes on the staff and the keyboard. We also worked on our individual pieces and we, you can see we're still reviewing the notes. This is just um, beginning, but we also learned about articulation, legato, and staccato, and also our dynamics, crescendo, diminuendo, forte, piano. It was a really fun class, and it's a great semester so far. Make music, when we perform music, we're trying to relate to everyone who listens to us, who attends our concert, what it's like to be human, right? That's all we're trying to relate, okay? Now that may be what we're feeling, that may be what the composer was feeling, or a combination of the two, ideally, but it's just, you know, it's kind of like, I'm a human being, and I'm sharing music with you, and you're also a human being, and hopefully we can channel that humanity and communicate on, on this emotional level, right? That, that doesn't even require words. It's just the language of music, right? I had another concert where we used to have these VHS video cameras that were really big, if you guys remember those. Well, this was at a church where there was a choir loft on the second floor, and that's where the VHS camera was set up. And during another quiet moment of a piece, the whole thing fell down. It fell from the balcony all the way into the sanctuary of the church and it went rolling down boom, 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 boom. so of course that changed right probably the interpretation of the piece and that's how we call it interpretation that's how you're presenting the work at, at a specific time as a performer and on that day I think is a really good one to kind of demonstrate this what is walking speed right depends on who's walking you know I'm always like really fast walking you know, other people are just so whose walking speed are we talking about, right? Um, so it's kind of, it's relative. There's not really a clear clear um, clear definition of walking speed is. Uh, first one being forte, uh, indicated with an F, and forte means loud, and the second one being piano, indicated with P, and that means soft. How do you know what that means? You're saying that you see it, something says soft. What is soft? Well, you don't know, right? It, it, <laughs> it's relative to what comes before or after. So that's part of the things we do as performers is we plan ahead. Because if you are speaking like this and then you need to be soft, you're speaking like that. You don't have very much room to be any softer than that, do you, right? Because you're gonna be mute and no one's gonna hear you. Same thing goes loud. Like the my loud can be like that. If I'm speaking like that, the my loud needs to be like that, right? So it's just, it's kind of all relative. To where you're coming from and where you're going, and one of the things we do is when we practice, <laughs> we plan out, right? What's gonna be loud, what's gonna be soft, and how, how we get there. That is a dynamic marking called crescendo. And crescendo means to gradually get louder. So we don't just have loud, right? We have to have some transition. So this is the transition. You start soft and then you gradually, gradually, gradually get louder. So crescendo doesn't mean you get loud, it means you gradually get louder. And the opposite of that, which is when the hair comes to closing like this, would be diminuendo, which is to gradually, gradually, get soft. Okay, so that's how we try to strike. And that's another thing that's very important and everybody in music has to know. Okay. Otherwise, it would just be loud and soft. And so, I did charge this. We are going to have a little bit of fun with this. Okay, so. What's a melody? It's like the main part of the 
or the music like the one that uh, <coughs> was like it's the part that gets stuck in your head the like the tune yeah the tune good what is harmony pitches and sound while the melody sounds so it's essentially multiple notes together right usually in chords sometimes in broken chords but it's multiple notes together that help create a more complex structure. Now, how do we do that? We do that by this idea of what we call tonal harmony, and that's Western music. What is tonal harmony? Tonal harmony is based on the idea of having a single tone, a tonic, which is the first note of whatever key or scale you're in, and that's your base, that's your home, right? So you leave your home in the morning, you go out, you go to class, you get some coffee, you do some homework, you go to the library, you go to the gym. But at the end of the day, you always come back home. And that's your tonic, that's your base, and that's how it is in tonal harmony. And in tonal harmony, music is written with a central note in mind that you will always come back to. And it is your home, and, and you're there, um, and you come back to it. Now, there's not an unlimited number of homes. There's, there's a limited number of homes. And here they all are. <laughs> They're uh, grouped together by uh, something in music we call the circle of fifths. Um, and a composer chooses one of these homes, and that's where kind of he or she comes back to, no matter where they travel. Now, you may visit somebody else's home during your particular work, but then you come back to yours. I'm going to show you guys how to, like a simple, simple way the musician uses this information. <clears throat> if they're saying, if they have a melody, but they don't have an accompaniment to it, right? They don't have any harmony to it. They can figure it out just based on the knowledge of music theory, which is what we're talking about. <clears throat> so, for example, you are my sunshine, right? Probably know that, that tune. Um, but by itself, there's something missing, right? <laughs> you kind of want to add something to it. Okay, so if you're a musician, you know to figure out what key you're in by looking at the key signature at the front of your piece um, and looking at the last note in the left hand, which you don't have, but okay, signature at the front of the piece, there's nothing, so you have got to be either in C major or A minor by no possibilitation leading tone, you know that you are in major. So you are in C major. <clears throat> so you know in C major, these are your primary chords. One, four, five, one. So one is the chord built on the first scale degree, which is your tonic, your home, C, C major. Then four is your uh, four chord built on the fourth scale, which is F. And uh, five is built on the fifth scale degree, C, D, E, F, G. You're five, that's one. Okay, so let's see if we can make this melody sound a little bit more exciting. So 